Welcome live from the Nicholas Sportsplex as the rivalry continues between the BGHW Stampede and the Prep Hockey Club. I am Luke Jordan here along with Ryan Contreras Betts and we're here to deal with you all the pregame, during game and post game action. Ryan, we know that you go to Hersey, you have a whole essay on BGHW, let's hear all about it. Yeah, so this BGHW squad, let's be real, they've been disappointing this year. They haven't played poorly, they're fourth in the, fourth in the league right now, uh, but their big problem is inconsistency so far. Uh, they're struggling with goal scoring from their bottom six. Uh, a lot of these guys last year that we thought we were going to take the next level, such as Max Janzik, who had a really good postseason last year. Uh, he hasn't taken that next level. He's still producing seven goals, three assists in 20 games, but their top, their top three is kind of unexpected. They're being led in points by Roberto Cetrasanu. He's got 26 points in 24 games. And get this, Luke, he was a defenseman last year. He's playing up on the center. He's playing at center this year, and he's really popping off. They're getting a lot of great production from John Gatta. He's a sophomore. He's putting up 15 goals leading this squad. And they're getting a lot of really good production from Logan Peterson on the defensive end. He's got four goals, seven assists. And this team, a big thing to note, they've stayed out of the penalty box a lot more than they did last year. So far, their leading penalty getter is Sam Levin with 32 penalty minutes. But they don't have too many guys that are like blowing you away on the penalty sheet. So they're definitely a much more disciplined team. Another thing to note, Noah Locke, who had a really good postseason last year getting called up to the varsity squad. He's just playing in his eighth game this year. He had a collarbone injury from football. He's going to be on the fourth line tonight. They're easing him back into the minutes, trying to get the, his skates under him. And yes, I, uh, I actually did just talk to his father. That he said he played very few minutes in the game on Wednesday against Deerfield. And he said hopefully he'll get a little bit more, but he did break his collarbone in the last regular season game for Hersey on the first offensive snap, according to his father. So definitely unfortunate, but happy to see him back. On the other hand, for Prep, they're just coming off of a tournament victory MLK weekend out in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. They beat the Bloomington Thunder 6-2 in the tournament championship to take that crown. And they've also taken the Fox Valley Fall Classic, both tournaments that my team has also played in. We've now played prep twice. We lost 4-3 the first time and 4-2 the second time. And we've learned if you catch prep by surprise, you have a chance of beating them. Absolutely, Luke. I mean, we've talked about this prep squad before, how unbeatable they seemed last year. They did lose a lot of their seniors, and this year, this BGHW squad only lost 2-0 uh, about a month and a half ago. So these two teams are really close together in terms of play, and we got to get started. Their goaltending is what's keeping them in this. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have to look at prep. We'd be remiss to not mention, um, to pull up the stats here for you, We'd be remiss not to mention Michael DeLay. He's been absolutely phenomenal so far this year. Uh, as of last check, he had a 1.17 goals against average and a 941 save percentage. He's popping off this year. That includes a string of, I believe, three straight shutouts. He's got six on the year so far. Then as we go check for BJHW, got Anthony De Silva, of course, getting the start tonight. He's got a 1.72 goals against average and a 938 save percentage. It is absolutely, I mean, I don't think people sitting down have any room to breathe. It is almost packed to the brim here. I mean, and people are still walking in. The parking situation was pretty poor with St. Viator's senior night over on the rink behind us. Right behind us. Um, it, it, it's going to be a good one today. It's a big rivalry game, so you're always going to get a, a large crowd for this one. But especially tonight, you look at the Hersey student sections really showing out, preps showing out. I'm seeing a lot of people I know who I would not expect to show up to some of these games. Uh, so it's always good to see people really get invested with their team. Yeah, over, over time you'll start to see some of the fans literally start to spread along the boards as there's about maybe 30 more seats open in this. Maybe, maybe even 30. I mean, this is oh, an not awesome, even 30. Yeah, this is an awesome environment. I'm very excited to be here. Well, especially for the fact this isn't West Meadows, which has a much larger seating capacity, so everyone's got to really pack in. So this one's going to be a really good one. As we were talking about this first line for BGHW, it's going to be uh, Cetrasanu, Gatta, Peterson, 
Then on D, it's going to be Birkin, Cotter, and Veller. Or not. Ooh. They've changed it up a little bit. It's going to be Nicholas Sampson starting out on the first defensive pairing alongside Jack Veller. Or uh, Joseph Forsberg. My apologies. So interesting to note they've changed up their defensive pairings from la um, just yesterday when I was talking to Roberto. So prep in black going from left to right on your screen. BJHW in the white unis going right to left. It's getting loud. Sticks are tapping the boards, and we're ready to go here at Nicholas Sportsplex. Luke Jordan along here with Ryan Kinchara's bets. Will Prep stay unbeaten? The narrative playing in their 25th league game. We're ready to go as Prep wins the draw and looks to advance. Loose in the neutral zone. Finally picked up by BGHW. Backhanded over, and Setrusano gives it over. Here's Gatta, the sophomore, coming down the left side. He fires it, patted away by DeLay. Up the boards it goes as Prep trying to get a breakout. Beals hustles himself. Just gonna dump and chase. Forsberg and Lambert in for a race. Lambert gets it to the middle. Beals down low. Couldn't get entire possession of it. Here come the Stampede. Led by the captain, Setrusanu. Takes a hit, but makes a play. Gets the puck in deep. Kosovic. Leads the breakout, and now Nick Albrecht, one of the captains, give it over, gives it over to the other captain, Miller Karnakis. Drop pass, Lambert fires, pad save to Silva, who's got a 9.38 save percentage in league play for a reason. Up the boards it goes, and over Nigro's hand as Veller's got to make a move quickly as Hensley's coming in hot. Interesting to note as we see Nigro out there with Veller, they're really changing up these defensive pairings from what I was told just yesterday. Jacob Rosansky enters the zone. He's going to fire it. It's loose in front, and Nigro is able to clear it out to the side. Slight checking going along along the hash mark here. Nobody gained it yet. Still shoveling for it, and it squeaks up to the blue line, but set back in deep. Veller and Dawson down low. Veller gets the edge. Now here's Janzak, Max Janzak. Janzak, excuse me, high shot and it's blocked away by delay and into the netting for the first whistle of the game, 13-14 to go in the first period. So far really liking the energy these two teams are coming out with. Uh, as you see Max Janzak with a nice little shot from just above the left circle. Janzak's always had a wicked wister, wrister. I reminisce back to my inline days, uh, my first couple years I played with Max. Always been a great player. Uh, and as we were talking about earlier, we were hoping you would take that next step. He's struggling a little bit this year to get on the score sheet. But maybe something changes here. That was a really good offensive opportunity for BGHW. Albrecht over to his D partner, Kosovic. Now Maher, hit against the boards, trying to make a play. Below the net now. Albrecht loses an edge. I think he actually tripped over the post by chance. Ooh. Oh my goodness, Scott Ben, you put a big hit. Half the crowd loves it, the other half not so much. Here's Birkenkotter down low. Gets it up high, but it squeaks back down low. Kosovic gonna try to fire it through traffic. Comes out to the other side as Skoura trying to get it in front, trying to find somebody in front of the net, and it's finally into the glove, or excuse me, blocker of De Silva for a whistle. Well, 12.30 to go so far, we've got some really even mash hockey so far, two shots each. Uh, I'm really liking BJHW, not being afraid to throw the body. I was, again, I was talking with Roberto a lot this week. Um, he was telling me he was like to see guys like Caleb, who's got a big body, to start throwing it more, and he threw a nice, good hit down low in the left corner. So that's a really good start for BJHW to really lay the body on and be aggressive. Forsberg scoops it up below the net. Pucks ahead of him, but he's able to recover. Coming in on man rush for the team in white. Here's Forsberg down the right side. Hits on the brakes. Looks up top. ESPN notification. <laughs> I was about to say the same <laughs> thing. Might want to turn the ringer off. Up in front, and Peterson fires it wide. Forsberg keeps it low. Centrosano. He's bodied by coffee. Whistle sounds. I believe the net is off. It is. Ooh, I just looked behind us, the Eagles up 28 nothing. Not a fan of that one. That's probably what the ESPN update was. <laughs> probably. Interesting. 
Interesting to see this Veller uh, Nigro defensive pairing. Very interesting pairing, much different from what I was expecting coming into this one. Speaking of Nigro, he gets it in deep for Ghetto. He's pinned against the boards before making a play. They try to throw it to the middle there. Still a battle. Veller loses an edge, but he's able Good to make play. a poke check and keep it in the zone. Desperation poke check. And a softer shot goes into the pad of delay, and he's just going to freeze it. There's a couple of new faces from each team. Head onto the ice for the draw to the left of Michael Delay. So far, these two teams, I mean, I'm, I'm really liking this. This is a really even matched uh, looking start to this first period. Both teams have a clear plan on how they want to be aggressive. Hensley hustling for it, but Veller making the smart play to put up the boards. Here's no lock coming off an injury. Back in play, gets it over to Kampenyuk, and that's tipped off to stick a Dawson. Wouldn't give him a chance to fire that one. Well, as you were talking about Noah just not too long ago, he doesn't have a goal yet in his seven games since coming back from injury. Uh, but he does have an assist. It's going to be interesting to see, like you were saying, if he gets more uh, playing time today considering he's now been back for, I think, a little over two and a half weeks. Rosansky, Kavenyuk got the draw. Prep victorious on that one. Puck now gaining right in front of the prep student section. That one, a slower run, and Delay is able to track it down like a catcher for another whistle with 11.01 to go. So you take a look at this prep squad. We meant, we meant to mention this earlier. But just so you know, the, the top three for prep in Lambert, Beals, and Melikronakis, they're in, they're, all three of them are in the top six in the league in scoring. Um, I mean, we, we're going to make mention that all evening. They're the guys that you've got to watch out for if you're BJHW and keep them off the score sheet. Well, actually, this morning they were three in the top six, so Zach Marjulis must have gotten some points today for Deerfield as he's now tied with Melikronakis there at that sixth spot. So technically three in the top seven. Still, I mean, that is, I mean that's amazing. That's, that's incredible. I mean, if you've got three in the top 20, you know you're doing something right. They could keep it over the blue and delayed offsides now intact. Porcher picks it up in the neutral zone, almost hits Mr. De Silva, the cameraman. But it stays in play. 10.22 to go. Zanzac to the middle. Ben, you've got a little bit of time. He's going to hit on the brakes, but it's a turnover as he gets a change. Here comes Jasinski. Takes a clapper, and it's no good. Blockered away by De Silva. Jasinski just coming off of a JV game that they played against BJHW. They actually had to call that game early due to a fight late in the third. They look across. Graziani fires, and a great save by De Silva. I mean, that's great by De Silva right there, keeping, keeping his eyes on the puck. Uh, shifting across the crease really nicely. For BJW, you gotta watch his open man over on that left dot. He was wide open. No one stepped up to put any pressure. It's a dangerous scoring opportunity, but you got the silver back there. I mean, crying out loud, a 9.38. He's two, been great. Two buddies of mine at the faceoff dot. Melikronakis for Brett Barry for BG. Bergen Cotter and Beals battling down low. Beals able to back in into the middle and De Silva preys on top of it. I mean, it's interesting you talk about your buddies. You know, I haven't really been in the hockey scene for quite a while, but it's crazy to see all these names I knew when I played inline hockey years ago. I mean, and to see all of them, a lot of them on the same line. They're all line mates, so it's really crazy to see that. Forsberg now cuts inside and gives it out to Maher on a deep breakout pass. Now Barry down the left side, drops it for Kabenu. Kabenu is hit by Melikronakis trying to make nice. a play. Melikronakis came in like a train there. Music starts playing. Beals now trying to get through Birkenkotter and he's pinned up by two trying to make the play. Now hit by Forsberg down low. And you hear some applause down low for not only the student section but the parents. Well, the senior there, Forsberg, he's been really good for this BGHW squad for a while now. And he made a really nice defensive play on that Albrecht dance around. And this one flutters into the netting off of a stick save by Anthony De Silva. 
and I'm loving to see the body. I mean, we know these two teams are rivals, and these teams usually get really chippy. Uh, but so far, I'm really loving the physicality, and it's staying clean. They're good hard hits, and they're all to make defensive plays. They're smart timed hits, and we, we've talked. We talked about last year. BJHW has to stay disciplined, and so far, they're doing just that, making the right plays at the right time. BJHW with the six fewest penalty minutes in league Ooh. play. Locke broke his stick behind the play. Did you see what happened there? I did not. It just shattered across um, uh, Rosansky's knee as he skated back. And there's a penalty. It's going to be a tripping call on Rosansky as I'm speaking. But yeah, ugh, I know that's got to kill Noah there. That stick, that stick just shattered. I, I heard it snap, and I'm like, oh, boy. 370 <laughs> down the drain. He goes and gets it. and <laughs> Got to get that warranty. He was, <laughs> he was shaking his head at his fellow students, probably giving them some stuff. Well, you got to hope he has that warranty that hasn't expired yet there. Hopefully it's day day 30 of the 30 day. Because otherwise I'd be pretty aggravated. I mean, oh. Especially, it was like loose from the play. Like, he wasn't shooting or anything. It just, right as uh, he got skated past, it just shattered. So uh, an early power play for BGHW here. Uh, in terms of power play goals this year, they've got a few. You know, up and down the line, you see the defensemen are getting into it. cetrasanu has got three of them. Leading, leading point producer, so you would hope he's getting a lot of power play time. BGHW has the sixth best power play out of 15 in the IHSHL North Central. And here they come with lots of speed. Setru Sanu dashing down the right side. He's going to try to beat Cosmic wide. That doesn't work on the great defender. Comes up top to Forsberg. He gives it down low. Unable to maintain it. They get it back, though. Forsberg now with the puck. Surveying. Down to the wing. Up in front. They look back door for Setru Sanu, but incomplete on the pass. They're going to try it again. Got up. Across. And it's off a skate of the captain, Nick Albrecht. Down low now, Logan Peterson got to make a play. He does make it, he takes the hit. Albrecht showing off the speed and now here he comes shorthanded. He cuts right at the blue line and just sends it backwards. And that's actually a too many, that was actually a too many men penalty that they missed there. As the ref And now got, some shoving's going on. The ref got, the ref got tangled up with, um, I believe that's Kosovic down low and he just completely collapsed. Jeez. I mean, ooh, that's an interesting one there. I was looking down right down. By the way, that was Coffee that got the tripping call, not Rosansky. My apologies there. Official's currently on his knees. Seems to be a little bit jammed up. Coach Panos from Prep comes out to talk to him. Give him a drink of water. <laughs> Quite an odd stoppage. We don't see these stoppages too often. He's just gonna get his stretches in, you know. Get that get those yeah, get that pilo. That was bizarre. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting music choice there. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of funny. <laughs> oh, we're having a good time here tonight in Mount Prospect. Beller gives it down low. Janzak chips it to Kirpieski, who's going to circle around. Sampson now conserving time on this power play opportunity. 44 seconds to go. Grabbed up there, but not enough for a penalty. They got a chance there. Zanzek shoots it, and it's blockered away by delay. Looking for the middle. It's a slow pass. They maintain possession. Put it down low now. Drazen and Graziani in a fight down low below the net. Nobody got it yet, and Graziani showing off the soccer skills, getting it to the other side, and they're going to dump it all the way down. Veller's got to reset. Feller was frustrated there. He wanted a pass for a good minute, for a good 20 seconds, and he wouldn't get it up at the blue line. Sampson stops it with his hand, but he's got to wait at the blue line. That was actually offside. 
hypothetically. Puck below the net. Graziani uses the glass, but it doesn't take the bounce that he wants. Back at even strength now here. 6.29. Looking across, Strazen intercepts it. Puts it in down low. He goes and gets a change. Deep pass to Will Beals. Ref a little bit in the way, but he's still going. Trying to get by Birkenkotter, and he's smushed like a sandwich in between the two. Kabenyuk's got to watch out. Albrecht's coming in hot. And a good hustle play by Albrecht. Just like I was going to say, I thought Ma Maher needed to watch out. He had um, Albrecht also on him, and then Albrecht skated across and made a really nice four-check play. 5.55 to go in this first period. Five shots apiece. Bergen Cotter takes a hit and makes Hensley fall. Those are two big boys going at it. Hensley's a little shaken up. Bergen Cotter, no worse for wear. Hensley backhands it in deep. It's a race for it. Oh. Ah. Awkward fall. Looked like he yeah. lost edge. Rosansky's going to fire it. Great save by who else but De Silva. De Silva and Delay, two of the top three goaltenders in this league. No question about it. Only one controversially better is Jake Lampert West from Deerfield, who's posting, I believe, over a 950. 955 with a 0.96. Yeah, he's, that, he's, he's that's doing ridiculous. Great. They look across and Dawson scores! By surprise, they catch the entire team by surprise. And they have the first tally of the game as the junior Dawson Heads over to his bench. Well, a really good pass as we take a look at this replay from behind the net. Some good backing play. Cross crease, one-timer. This is a really nice play out in front. Dawson puts it home. For Dawson, that's his fifth goal of the year. And Prep takes, an early, takes a lead here in this first period. Again, just really nice passing. PJHW wasn't prepared. Their sticks weren't on the ice. Samson lost his man. Dawson was Samson's man. He was left all alone in the crease. That's how Prep takes a 1-0 lead with five minutes to go here in the first period. And you got, if you really want a chance with Prep, you got to make the first strike. So it's definitely a little bit of pain going into that BJHW squad, but there's still plenty of time to recover, relax, and just keep playing your game. They've been playing pretty solid up to this point. I mean, just one mistake shouldn't shouldn't make your whole game fall apart. They've been playing really solid so far. That's just one missed coverage. So as long as they get their head back in and regain momentum, they should be good to go. Back in the corner it goes Nigro Beals fighting for it. Beals trying to cycle down low to Lambert. Back up top, it ends up squeaking to Jasinski. The call up, he misses wide. Gata sends it all the way down for a whistle. 4.08 to go. Zach Dawson, his fifth goal of the season and 10th point in league play. He's back out there now. Nobody got it yet, until they get it out. Max Zanzek just dumps it in. Kosovic gets it up to the winger, but it squeaks by him. Samson's just gonna put it, it goes wide. 3.50. 11, it's in his skates, that's scary. Here's Rosansky, two on one with Hensley to his left. He looks across, tipped in front. De Silva sticks it away. Scary moment there for the BGHW defense. That's a really good stick by Samson there. Really slowed down the shot. Uh, Levin's got to keep that puck out of his skates any way he can. That's a costly turnover. And he's double shifting. It looks like he tried to go off for a change but wasn't able to get there. Albrecht. Oh my gosh. If he finished that, that would have been incredible. I mean, he is such a fast player. Loose in front. Horcher behind the net now, gives it up to Scara, back down to Horcher. The two seniors connect, they look in front, Scara almost had it, still loose in front of the net, and they couldn't put it. 
Huge opportunity, and oh. Prep's starting to take a big hold of this game. Another broken stick, and ooh, interesting icing call. Oh, so that's Scaria who had a broken stick. He lost his blade. That's always the worst way to break your stick. Maher is pleading his case with the referee why it's not an icing. And looks like we're going to have a penalty on prep. Suchia. Suchi is going to go to the box. Going to be interesting to see if it might be a too many men. I'd wonder if it bumped off of one of the prep players' skates as they went off for a change. We'll have to wait to hear from the PA address announcer. PA address. Public address announcer. Same thing. Same thing. Uh, we'll have to wait to hear from her and find out what the penalty call is. But BJHW with 2.58 to go in the first has the man advantage. Let's see if they can capitalize this time. They were not able to get very many shots off on the first opportunity. See and if they can change that up here. Now they motion since it was an icing that the faceoff should be in the neutral zone. Coach Waters does not like that call whatsoever. He's saying he's saying that that was not an icing. Yeah, that's that's what I thought they were arguing about at first, but it seems like it was a mixture of the icing and a penalty. So now they motion it back down low, I think. I'm not sure. Bizarre, to say the least. So BJHW has the man advantage for the second time tonight. They were only able to get two shots off on that first man advantage. I mean, like we were just saying, let's see some changes. Ooh. Delay him. Oh, because he didn't. Wow, wow. I've never heard that one called before. I've heard equipment violations, but that's a new one. Yeah, me as well. Setro Sano wheels below the net. Ooh. Up top, Nigro. Blocker was there, so he tried to get rid of it. Oh, that hit off of somebody on the bench, I thought. Yeah, it hit off of um, Kosovic's stick. His stick was leaning over, or Lambert's stick. It was leaning over, blocked the play. And oh, I'm gonna have to talk to Roberto about that one in class this week. He had Gatto wide open in the crease, and he just missed the pass out towards Nigro. Those two have had great chemistry this year. I mean, uh, Roberto is telling me that he and Johnny have really been feeding each other left and right, and that's how they've had a lot of success. I know he'll look back on the tape, and he'll pinch himself over that one. Puck comes up to the point. Sampson did not get through one piece of traffic. All the way down it goes, 1.17 to go on the power play opportunity. Almost two minutes left to go on the first slate of three. Forsberg drops it off. Setru Sanu cuts in. Speeding down the neutral zone. Here he comes. He's looking. He's going to take a tough angle. Fire. It doesn't work out for him. That's a really nice play by Setru Sanu doing a little coast to coast, dancing through a couple. That was a really nice shot in close right off the blocker of delay. Another interesting note, I mean, we're going to be, I'm going to talk about uh, Roberto a lot because I've had a lot of time to get to know him over this past week. He didn't start playing hockey until he was 10. Wow. So he's a late bloomer and he's, like, like we were talking about, leading uh, point producer on this BJHW squad. Birkenkotter shoots and it's another routine save for delay who's been playing incredible so far. Peterson looks to the middle. Nobody there. Comes up to Forsberg who takes a clapper and it's probably made a couple flinch. Pass to the backhand of Peterson. Still loose, Coffey. Birkin Cotter now, repossesses for the Stampede. Forsberg uses the boards to find the sophomore, Gatta. Here's Gatta. He fires and he almost scored. Just wide right, he had delay beat there. It's loose in front. The net comes off. That comes was, all the way down. That was really interesting there. It looked like, um, who is that? It looked like Giordano almost fired it straight into his own net. He was trying to clear behind his net and it went right past the post. Suchi is ready to head out of the box. And we're back to even strength. Under a minute to go, left in the first period. Shots 9-8 in favor of prep so far. Failed breakout. That one takes a weird bounce, but De Silva tracking it. 
Maher and Kosovic were battling, but it comes backwards to prep, and now they re-enter. Here comes a zone entry from the team in black. Beals looks across for Melkonakis, up but for Elbrick, and he fires it over the net. Oh my, he's gonna want that one back. That's just what makes this prep squad so dangerous. You take a look at that replay back here. They just knifed through to the defense. Really good passing, Melikonakis. He couldn't get a shot up. That was on his backhand. So what does he do? He shuffles it towards Albrecht. Fires it just over the net. Faceoff comes to the neutral zone along the left wing boards. Albrecht looks at options and tries to get over Jasinski. He loses an edge. Kerbieski makes a play down low and they restart the breakout. Drazen sauces it up across to Janzak. He's got to get by Jasinski, but he can't. Squeaks out to the middle. Albrecht scoops it up, but the time runs out for one period of three. It's been a very back and forth game so far. Definitely a little bit of the tide turned in Prep's favor up to this point. What did you think of that first period overall? Really even match first period for both of these teams here. Uh, I liked what Pre BJHW came out to do. Um, aside from one mistake by Samson, uh, leaving Dawson open in front of the crease, I thought they played really good shutdown defense. Uh, they stayed disciplined, which is really good to see. Uh, and then for this Prep squad, they, and both these teams did almost everything right. The one thing Prep didn't do right, they weren't disciplined. They took, what, three penalties? Two penalties yeah. in that uh, period. And that's not something you see too much from this Prep squad. They are not on the penalty kill too often. When they are, they have a very good PK unit. Um, but they did almost everything exactly as they needed to. And if you're BJHW, you just gotta get a few more offensive zone opportunities. Shots are pretty even, 10 for prep, eight for BJHW. So I'm looking forward to this second period. We'll see what uh, plays they start writing up on the BJHW bench. I mean, period of the long change. That might really affect these two teams, we'll see. Um, it's gonna be a lot of high intensity action. We know these, these teams, they might like each other off the ice, but on the ice, let me tell you. Oh yeah. There's a lot of amnesty between these two teams. Even though a lot of these guys are former teammates throughout youth hockey yeah. and good friends outside of hockey, on the ice, doesn't matter. Prep is 22-0-2. Their only two losses of the season are actually out of league play. They played in a holiday tournament and they lost to GBN, who is top five in state, as well as Stevenson, who's top five. So. Their only losses are to legitimately incredible teams. Will BG join that list? They have a chance. We'll see how it goes. Beals for checking hard, puts Forsberg into the boards. Looking for the middle, Melkronakis to Lamberg. They couldn't connect. Albrecht, hard pass to Melkronakis. He catches it like it was nothing. But a turnover now, and here they come two on two. Setru Sanu. Down the left, beats Albrecht wide, he loses an edge. And back with tons of acceleration comes Prep. Great play by Gatta. Fires it up top. Delay's glove was right in the perfect spot. He didn't even have to move it. And we get a whistle. Well, speaking of those state rankings, as of today, Prep is now ranked fourth in the state and BJHW. Preps ranked fourth in the state, BGHW drops to, I can't get it to load for whatever reason. Uh, I believe BGHW's ranked 21st, that's what they were last night when I was setting up these uh, stats. Comes up top to Birkenkotter. I think it took a weird bounce there. Here comes Nick Lambert, over to Will Beals. Nice pass to Mela Karnakis, drops it to the D-man Coffee, and it's blocked by the skate of Janzak. Here comes Forsberg, drops it. Glad loses it. Here comes Beals, Beals and Lambert, two on one with Birkin Cotter defending. Surveys, fires, and a glove save by Anthony Da Silva. 
Well, BJHW's got to limit those two-on-one breakout opportunities. They got to come in with more speed through the offensive zone. They could have had a four-on-three odd man rush. They kind of spaced out to the boards, didn't collapse on to the middle of the ice, lost an offensive opportunity, and then Prep comes right back with two-on-one. Uh, really good defensive positioning to force a shot instead of a pass across. Buck squirts out to the middle. Maher with the pickup. Rebound in front, and it tips off of a sliding coffee. And actually, that helped delay there, I will not lie. Yeah, I was going to say, had he not fallen into coffee's skates, that's a tap-in goal. That's a brilliant shot by Maher to just go for the rebound opportunity. That's the best opportunity this BJHWS squad has had so far here tonight. And that's an important one. Oh wow, that potentially a high hit and they do get oh, him. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's definitely penalty. Levin is hyped up. Maher goes to hype him up. Hensley heads to the box and BGHW heads to the man advantage for the third time tonight. This BGHW crowd is loving it. I'm seeing a couple more guys I know start pulling up. I, I'm Ooh. sorry, I cannot believe Coach Panos is arguing that call. That was very high up. Uh, if we could get a replay of this real quick just so we could double check. Let's go see where this hit ended up. Try to get this before. Oh, that was the previous play. That was the play. previous play, that was the... Uh, that was a, yeah, yeah well, but he was... <laughs> we did our best there. I mean, I, I just... From here, I mean, I feel like we had a pretty good angle. That looked like his elbow was angled upward. And yeah, they gave him an elbowing call. That's yeah, that's that's I, exactly what you expected. I think that one's right. I don't think there's any reason to argue that one. Well, they're trying to eliminate uh, high hits like that, so it's a really good call to make. You gotta you gotta draw the line somewhere, and they're making it clear. They're not gonna let that slide tonight. Meyer looks across to his teammate Kabenu. Albrecht throwing in the body. He's able to knock him off the puck. Reset in the neutral zone. Sampson backing up over to Veller. Pass to the wing on the breakout, who is Cetris Sanu. Sampson looking across, it's turned over. They chip it back in deep. Porcher goes to get a change. Suchia as well. I know Cetris Sanu is not a fan of that one. It's kind of a little bit of a broken breakout there. And they lose it once again, but Cetris Sanu steps in front of it. Lambert now creating into a two-on-one. Coming in, what a play by Joseph Forsberg. Wow, Forsberg, that's brilliant. He timed that perfectly. If he didn't time that on time, that could have been a tripping, but he does everything right there and prevents any sort of penalty. Here's Beals with an opportunity, diving out wow. comes to Silva. Oh my goodness, Albrecht comes in, shoots it wide. Wow. And the prep squad is livid. They think that should be a trip on De Silva. Hit up high. Gana comes in. He whips. Loose in front. Delay hops on top of it. Shoving in front. And there's a scrum. Oh, scrub. goodness. The beat. Oh, boy. Somebody's helmet's off. It appears to be. Jancic. Yeah, that's yeah, Jancic's Jancic. helmet that's off. Ooh, this got the both student sections hyped up. We're hyped up here in the booth. Oh boy, take a look at this replay on the shot attempt. Gata just so close. Gata fights through the check. Then there's a scrum. Someone definitely chopped at uh, Delay's glove. You don't have a reaction like that unless you chop at the goaltender. I think it must have been Peterson because he's in the box. Well, it looks like they're going to give two roughing calls. They're going to give it to, um, is that Hensley? Yeah, they're going to give Hensley and Peterson, I would assume, rough setting. Offsetting roughing. Hensley already had the penalty. Remember, he got the elbow. Oh yeah, you're right. I am. So uh, this is actually only a penalty on BGHW. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they give Peterson. Instigator, maybe. Not a mistake to make on an offense that scored 20 power play goals in 24 games. Well, it's gonna be four on four here for another 21 seconds. So no open ice four on four. Let's see if BGHW tries to take advantage of it, down one. But let's also not forget, Prep might take advantage of the open ice too. They've got their guys out there, but they're gonna have coffee line up 
with Giordano on the point. Giordano throws it down low to the winger. Lambert now was looking for the shot. He's still possessing. Just throws it in deep. Pressure and hop from Lambert. He's going to try to wrap it around. He fumbled it as he tried to angle around. Coffee now protecting the puck. Throws it to the middle, but nobody there. It's now five on four hockey. 135 left on the power play that just started for Prep. 11-13 to go. Albrecht puts it back. Jezak loses his stick, and he believes that Albrecht slashed it. I didn't see it. Here comes Lambert. Makes a stop, gets it up to Kosovic, across to Albrecht, looking across. Lambert wasn't ready. And now they're really possessing this power play. Up in front, backhand, loose in front, another bad save, still loose on the other side now, and it's not in the back of the net. Great defense there down low. Again by Forsberg, he's made so many great defensive plays as he loses his stick and it's thrown aside by Melikonakis. Up top, Albrecht steps down, fires, loose. Still nobody put it yet. It's behind the net now. Forsberg cuts back, uses the glass precisely, and Albrecht can't keep it in. 33 seconds left to go on the power play opportunity. Another great defensive play by Forsberg. He's been really on fire tonight so far. Pressure cooker being created so far. Will they score a goal on this opportunity? Graziani down low to Hensley, who's fresh out the box. Nobody got it yet. Hensley just turns around and fires. And interesting decision. And it's covered up by De Silva. Nine seconds to go in the second period. Face off comes to De Silva's left. Oh, pressure's really heating up. I mean, it's high intense energy. You can feel the tension. The only goal of the game so far was Jacob Rosansky passing to Zach Dawson for the putback on the back door. Speaking of Rosansky, he's got it down low, but great pressure by Veller. Causes him to panic. We're now at even strength. They got to get it out, though. Comes up top, Graziani. Looking for that opening. He's just going to throw it in the corner instead. Taking advantage of the full strength. Here comes BJW looking across. Here's Gatta. Trying to avoid Jasinski and a good defensive play by Jasinski who's really been playing well. Yeah, and his brief call up, I'm like. Hold liking. on, Peterson, you were saying? I was gonna say, I'm really liking it. We were talking about he's just called up today. And he just played a game. Here's Rosansky, shoots it in. Another great save by De Silva, positioned correctly, and it pays off. Rosansky loses an edge and the hand comes up late from the official. Cross checks from behind by Dawson. Letting Gatta know what's up. Graziani tries to break him up. And another power play is going to happen for Prep. Looking to take advantage. Gatta does not like the call. Looks like Gatta might be getting a call here too. Yep, they're going to send Gatta to the box as well. They've got to be sending uh, someone from prep to the box too, right? I, I don't know. Because I believe Gatto was also the reason for that penalty that happened previously when Rosansky lost an edge. Yeah, he, lost he tripped over tripped, and he fell yeah. down. Like it was a 50-50. Yeah. Well, I'm just surprised because it looked like they were going to give the call to prep initially. Because um, their bench was up in arms. Man, I, I wish, I know it's way too early to be saying anything like, like this, but I was just thinking about it. Like, in general, they should add overtime to the IHSHL. Like, come on. You know what awesome would be overtime in here? I mean, games like this are perfect for overtime. You got a packed student section on both sides. Kosovic fires it through traffic. De Silva tracks it down. Well, interesting penalty they give together. They give him a roughing call. Huh. And he took the cross check without any retaliation, so it's very interesting. Beal cycles it down to Lambert looking across, and Logan Peterson is there to intercept the pass. They get it by Kosovic, and they'll need to restart from their own defensive zone. Deep pass across to Nick Lambert. Lambert now entering down the left, looking for that pass. He gives it off to Beals. Beals now back to Lambert. 
8.20 to go in the second period. Looking for that give and go in front. Instead, they're going to look up to the point. Albrecht now. Fakes it. Over to Beals. Back to Albrecht. Back to Beals. Clapper almost found its way. Da Silva somehow saw that through everything and stuck his glove out. Knew where it was going and as he released it. Yeah, that looked like a little bit of a knuckle puck there. Are there any Mighty Ducks fans out there? Uh, with this prep squad, their power play, I know last year they really liked to set up one-timers. And they had a lot of success there. Oh, yeah. There. Michael Stein. Stein, oh, oh boy. Lord. What a shot. But even we look at this squad, you've got Albert, who is a wicked slapper. BJW's done a great job of eliminating one-timer opportunities so far. Now Kronach is looking in front. It's loose, and the net's off. Nigro had possession. It'll remain a face-off in the offensive zone, and talking about power play weapons, leading prep and power play goals is Nick Lamberg with six, and leading in power play assists, Will Beals has seven. I mean, Beals is always a great passer. That much we know about him. Leads the team in assists with 24. Yep. I mean, to be a great passer, you're going to set up a lot of plays. This, this, this entire first line for prep is just so in tune. They've got great chemistry, and they know where everyone is on the ice. It's like they've got eyes in the back of their head. It's been at least two years in a row where they've developed that first line and just be an absolute powerhouse. Like, when you're playing them, speaking from experience, and you see that first line out there, you're like, okay, we just got to hold them to nothing here. We don't even have to score. We just have to make sure they don't. Exactly. And I mean, that's why I said earlier in the pregame, you just got to keep this first line off the board as much as possible. Albrecht across to Melkronakis, looking in front. Rebound, Beals. He scores! Wow. Beals is going to reminiscent of the Stein Selly a little bit. That, we were talking about Stein earlier, but... That's a one-timer, first one we've seen in a while. A little bit of a trickling puck. A power play goal for Prep, and they take a 2-0 lead. William Beals gets on the board. For Beals, that's his 17th goal of the year, and that's his fourth power play goal. We were talking about him being a pass. Pass first guy. We were talking about him really setting up plays, and he gets a goal there. Electrifies the Prep side of the crowd. Now it's 7.26 here to go in the second frame. We got ourselves a 2-0 game. It's deflated right now on BJHW side. Can they bounce back? You got to get something going before the end of this period to make a statement. Here comes Locke coming in with speed. Drazen looking for the middle. Locke gets it. Whistle sounds. Locke's not happy. That puck was not clearly dislodged. loose. Yeah, but the net is off, and that's why. See, here's something interesting. You talk about the BGHW bench looking deflated, and this is where this is where I feel like the coaching has got to talk at intermission and really get their spirits up. If you look at the prep bench, everyone is standing except for two guys who just came off the ice, and Melo yep. and, Al and um, Lambert. BGHW's bench, everyone sat down after the goal was scored except for Joe Maher, the senior. You've got to hope the leadership on that bench says, stand up. Camille Scour trying to beat Levin wide. He fires and it's sticked away. Now behind the net. Digging it out as Horcher getting it to Camille in front. And they use the boards. BJHW with a nice play. Kabenyuk just fires it all the way to the other side. 6.45 to go in the second. And now this, again, disappointing. Only Luke Finella is up on the bench as a sophomore. Up front, Levin uses the boards. And deep it goes. No icing is the call. Oh, never mind. Yeah, one, 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 uh, one waved no and one said yes. So the yes is going to overrule the no. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I was looking down at the other referee. You were looking at the one right up along the boards. Yeah, that one down here is just like, nope. He's like, no. He's also the one that fell down earlier, so I'm sure he doesn't want to deal with anything. Peterson Melkronakis at the dot. Cetrisano gets it immediately. Leaves it for Burke and Connor, and it would not get through. Lamberg looks across. Great play by Forsberg to break it up. Here's Cetrisano coming in. Gives it over to Peterson, and it's tipped. Cetrisano looking for the middle. It's blocked by Kosovic. And now Lambert chips it up. And it's right onto the stick of Burke and Connor. Gets it over to his D partner, Forsberg. Forsberg's got to use the boards here. As a heavy forecheck from Beals is causing them to move it quickly quicker than they expected in the skates of Forsberg now. 
Peterson picks it up. Beals keeps it in. Over to Lambert. Lambert takes a little step. Attempted cycle, no dice. Here's Setrusano. Beats Albrecht wide, but no, Albrecht stays with it. Incredible effort there. And it flips the ice to the other side. Woo. Oh, I, oh God. And the, woo, no slap. Beals takes a slap shot and save, rebound in front. So Gatto wanted a trip call, which I 100% agree there uh -oh. should have been a trip Watch there. out here, watch out. Yeah, Ooh. I'm surprised that wasn't a heavier hit. Peterson, pressure comes in and he lost it. Rosansky looks across to Hensley. Hensley blazing in with speed, fires it, and another stick save, Anthony De Silva. Well, I mean, we were saying uh, with Gatto down there, it looked like it absolutely should have been a trip. His stick right got, got right in between the blade. But you also gotta watch, we were talking about discipline, discipline, discipline. You have to. And you have, and Gata slashed his stick. I thought 100% there was gonna be a slashing call. Gata's lucky that he didn't get, didn't get sent to the box for that one. He's only a sophomore and he's looking really good, so you just gotta keep your composure as much as possible. Maher, hard hit from Graziani, but he stays on his feet. Now turns and looks up to the point, Feller. It's gonna fire, tipped in front, they score! That's gonna Oh my goodness, half of the building just erupted! Oh, let's take a look at this replay. I don't know who it deflected in. This is either gonna be, looks like they're giving Barry the benefit of the doubt. He definitely deflected this. Let's see. Little flipper, yep, that's yep. only Barry. Did not hit, uh, wow, did not hit. Um, wow, what a goal. And that just felt like home ice advantage for the Stampede. They've been waiting impatiently for that first strike, and they just got it there. They've been waiting to erupt on that one, and that's a good, you know, Veller made the smart decision there. It's not the greatest shot in the world. He's just trying to get something to the front of that. BJHW's been on their toes with zero offensive zone opportunity for much of the second period. So Veller just takes a floater, gets it through traffic. There's a lot of bodies in front of delay. Takes a nice redirect and it went down through the five hole. And BGHW, they've got some momentum. They're right back in this one. Shot blocked. Lambert trying to answer back. Another great save by De Silva. Malkarnak is now amidst the noise. Beals gets it down low up to the point. Here's Kosovic. He's going to fire. It's into the stick of Forsberg. And now here they come. Forsberg. Speeding. Across, loose in front, and we almost had a tie game. Scary look there. Lambert's got it. He's on a breakaway with the Silva coming in, backhand, and he lost it. Wow, the Silva got the poke check out in front. Malkonakis backhand up front. Albrecht fumbled it a little bit. He's going to try to cut in between two. He lost it. Forsberg backhands it up. They got to get out of it. Absolute pressure falling on him right now. Now Drazen coming in. Kosovic on his right, trying to get by, and he lost it. This crowd is electric here tonight. Oh, my. My heart's pounding like I'm playing out there. It's incredible. Skara with pressure from Nigro. Now, now, it's, now it's a little bit quieter for a minute. That's Barry's fifth goal of the season. Seen a couple guys get their fifth here tonight. Peterson and Coffey. Coffey wins the battle. Risky play to play the body there for Locke, and now here comes Uchia. Great stick check by Nigro. Back in deep. That is going to be an icing in with 3.06, 3.05 to play. It's 2-1. to one. Ooh. Ooh, baby. And you, you can need some water for this one. You could, you could see uh, BJHW breaking off their Achilles heel there. As last time they played prep, they lost 2-0. They didn't score a goal. Delay shut them out. And they said, hey, if we lose, we lose, but we're not letting another shutout happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your BJHW, it's just one at a time. As, you could tell they want to win, and now here they come in, two on run. Setrosano across, got a fires. What a save wow. by Michael DeLay. Porcher comes in hot, shoving in down below the net. It looks like, ooh, prep might go on the mat, or might go on the PK here. 
Not a very smart play by Horcher. I know he's trying to protect his goalie there. Good 80% of this building is standing right now. What a save by DeLay. Oh, baby. What a save by DeLay. Over on the rink behind us, Loyola just beat St. Viter in overtime. Wow. Three to two. No penalties here. They're letting him wow. play. Ooh. Just a few moments ago, about 80% of this building was on their feet. It is loud again here at the Nicholas Sportsplex. I mean, just like you're saying how it, like tight this place is, it feels like a better environment than the championship last year. It, yeah, in a way it does. I mean, and to be fair, Prep did dominate both of those games. But it's loud here. It is loud. Back to action. And you can tell it's gonna start getting chippy. Lamberg beats Levin to the puck, diving past the Beals! Wow! And that was almost the most incredible play. They look in front for Lamberg again. It that, does not work. That really, really reminds me of Connor Bedard at the World Junior Classics a couple of weeks ago, diving out to make that pass. Home run pass to Lamberg on the breakout, but he lost it. Delay is gonna play it. They look deep. Bird Cutter misses the stick check. Everybody misses the puck and Mel Kronakis comes in and scoops up the loose change. Down low, Birkin Cotter, his friend, pressuring. Top, Kosvik. Fires that almost Ooh. found its way in. Nobody blocked it there. Nigro's gotta get rid of it. Gabenyuk looking for Maher, it's behind him. Back in it goes. Another breakout attempt, here we go. They use the boards, but it's too far ahead for Maher. Kosovic to Rosansky. Rosansky coming across in the neutral zone. Picked up by the first goal scorer of the game, Zach Dawson. Dumped in deep, Birkenkotter a nice play to quickly backhand it off the boards. What a pass by Maher. And now here comes Robert Berry, the only goal scorer for BGHW so far. He's unsuccessful on that one. Good effort nonetheless, here's Rosansky. Cuts inside. Now to the outside, down the left. Still has it. Nobody's stripping it from him yet. Wozanski picks it up. It comes across and Marr. Backhands it over to Janzek. He knows Birkenkotter's behind him. He loses an edge trying to make a play. Birkenkotter's in hot, oh goodness. What a hit. Uh oh, yeah, that's a little bit after the play though. And this place is wild. That's gonna be Burke heading to the box. I, I could tell already. I, I saw I the ref skate over. I don't know. They might have that be offsetting there. Burke and Cotter's helmet and gloves are now off. He's screaming at coffee. Whoa, 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 whoa. There should not be prep. Okay, it's Albrecht as a captain coming over yeah, to defuse. Making... I was gonna say, he should not be coming off the bench to get involved in that. Yeah, that would have been a penalty. That, I mean, they had two guys come off the bench. I thought, um, Matt Melikonakis and Albert were both going to skate and get involved. I was like, for this prep squad, there's no way your two hot top line guys are going to do that. So let's see what's going to happen here. There's going to be penalties. There has to be. Scrums like that. So let's see what we're going to get here. Referees talking with both the coaches and Melikonakis down low. Set your sign and the captain goes over to find out what's going on. And with 58.1 to go here in the second period, we got ourselves a barn burner one. Barton Cotter's still there. Oh, never mind. I think he's gonna leave. I think he hold on. Huh. He made it look like he was leaving the ice. Yeah, I, I thought for a second he was gone. I mean. I wonder what they're talking. Sometimes I wish we had hot mics for this one. It would be great to get insight on that. I'm speechless. So it's going to be a BJHW penalty. They've got the box open for them. Not something you want to have. We're talking about discipline. 
and Burke and Cotter, I mean, he's, I believe he's second on the, er, so he's just behind Joseph Forsberg for third most penalty minutes with 28 this year. Now, I was talking to Roberto, he said he'd love to see Caleb lay the body more frequently, but not in cases like that where it's oh, well yeah. after the play. Yeah, it's just a scary look. It, it's unfortunate because, ah. Ref, this is a long discussion, so they're obviously trying to figure out what's going on here. Yeah, we might be here a little bit later than expected. It's already 9.51, we haven't even started the third period, so. Yeah. How are you liking this game, huh? <laughs> well, looks like the Eagles are about to win. I checked behind me, it's 28 to seven still. Thought the Giants might have done something. Oh, by the way, Cole Caulfield out for the rest of the season. Soldier, yeah. so, shoulder surgery. Oh, by the way, talking about Cole Caulfield and hockey, I will say me and Ryan are getting a little podcast going eventually. We'll let you know more about that next week, hopefully when we have our first episode out. But we, we thought of a name. It's called Bender and the Beast. Yeah. You could probably figure out who the bender in this equation is here. Yeah, so it is going to be Burke head into the box, expected. The prep crowd is getting on their feet now. They got the student section tossing some shirts amongst themselves. Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, it's going to be a dangerous penalty power play unit here for this prep squad. Albrecht's talking amongst the students. So I, I can't wait to hear what the penalty is going to be. I, I, like they could, what are they, what could they give him? Roughing, interference. There's so many different options we could see. I just like want to see what it is. But then the refs are both talking to Caleb, so obviously there's something a little bit more than a typical interference call. I would assume so at least. They haven't put the uh, time up on the board yet. But that's a killer. I mean. BJHW just got into this game. Yeah. I mean, it's a one goal game and now you put them, I'd say this gotta be one of the most dangerous power play units in the entire league. And they're playing on home ice. I mean, this crowd is electric. You just gotta try to stay disciplined. This is gonna be a big penalty. This is gonna be a big, big moment in the game here. This really, it's the biggest moment of the game so far. My gosh. We're having a third referee show up took him a while <laughs> it took him a little too long i think it was an emergency call up yeah from he's definitely from the fighter game i would assume that game went to overtime so probably a little bit of an extra and now goal. that ref's working overtime yeah, getting his extra paycheck in good for him now, who is on aux i want to compliment them they've been great tonight There's probably some tweet from Prepper BJHW. <laughs> if you have a ref jersey and you live, if, and if you're in this building, we please come ref you. this game. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. Like not last no year. yet. Not that the refs are doing bad. They're doing their job. It's just so hard to control this chaotic of a game with two people. I mean, it, with just how big of a rivalry this game is, they got to clamp yeah. down in some way. Yeah, I see that score too, Luke. 31-7 Eagles. Wow. Daniel Jones fires it deep and it's dropped. A deep pass. Which game are you calling? I'm doing both games, said Kevin Harlan two years ago. <laughs> Got my own little Kevin Harlan as my partner here. Look at that replay. It's a great route by James. <laughs> there is a hefty discussion. Hefty, hefty discussion. So the entire prep student section is standing. No one from BJHW is really standing up other than the people who have no seats. Only a two minute minor. Jones scrambling, third and 10, the ball is loose. Picked up by his own lineman. And they're able to maintain possession, but it'll be fourth and long for the Giants. Montez Sweat on that play. No, that's not Montez Sweat. Well, they're going to send Le uh, Sam Levin to the box, too. 
So we'll let you know what the call is. <laughs> well, oh boy, it's loud in here. Hey Russell, you got the you got the sensor sound effect going. <laughs> Oh goodness. Oh boy. I Tox can't. Toxic environment. I can't wait. Oh, if this wasn't high school, that's a delay of game. Wow, this is a disorganized BGHW squad. We still don't know what the penalty is. It's two minutes, so we know that. I don't know what Levin's doing in there. This, this is the most buzz. I think it might be two and ten. Two and ten, it's possible. Very, very Final possible. 52 seconds before the Zamboni comes on, if they even let the Zam come on. This game's running late, to say the least, but the fans don't care. They'll stay till midnight if they have to, showing their compassion tonight. Albrecht now, center of the blue line. Yeah, he got a two and a 10. Looking, Melkronakis finds the middle for Albrecht, but he's pressured, so he's gonna back off. 26 seconds to go, they got very good possession going. They're going to try to fire it through pressure here. Never mind. Smart play by Lambert to even fool me on the case. Back over. Albrecht fires it. It got tipped, but it was wide left. And final to 11 seconds. Maybe one last rush here for Prep. Let's see if gotta they Got to hurry. They use it. the boards. Lambert's got time. Three seconds. He's got to fire it. And it's wide. And the buzzer will sound as Beals takes a little slip to end the second period. Both teams head to the locker room for what will be probably a stay disciplined motivational speech from each coach. Man, to be to be a to be a fly on the wall of both of these locker rooms would be phenomenal. I'd love to hear what the conversation is. It, it definitely, like you were saying, it's got to be something along the lines of stay disciplined. But who this will be an interesting one to see. So, so we'll, we'll head to a short break here. We'll have one more period cooked up for you guys. Make sure to stick around. This game has been awesome. We will see you in just under 10 minutes. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the action live here on RDL Audio Visual. I am Luke Jordan along here with Ryan Contreras Betts. We have had a chaotic series of events through the first 30 minutes of hockey. 15 left to go. Ryan, give us give us everything that you that you got there. Oh boy, where do we start? I mean, this game up until probably the final two minutes or so was everything. There was some undisciplined play. There were a couple of hits here and there that I didn't like, but everything was going really nice and smooth, really hard, physical, good back and forth play, but here's the problem. Caleb Birkenkart at the end got a, got two, two minor penalties, uh, and then he got a 10 minute game misconduct, so he's done for the evening. For a very late hit down low, uh, and that's where we, that's basically the big thing that happened. And it got this crowd absolutely electrified. Prep getting a power play. The team started getting really, really chippy. Um, oh my gosh, did you just see that? Lara and Beals almost collided doing circles on their perspective warm up sides. Well, Beals right before the period ended lost an edge completely and just slammed. Ah, here it is, yeah, look. <laughs> oh, I love the replay system. But, shout, out, uh, shout out Russell. Oh, we love Russell around these parts. He's our man. We don't love Danny too much. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so like I said, we heard a little bit of extra word about Caleb, so that's big. He's going to shoot into first place on the penalty minutes. I know his parents are... Not too happy with them. I got to briefly interact with Mr. Burke and Cotter. Um, these two teams have got to start scoring. See another prep player lose an edge. Now, uh, part of the reason it's so loud in here is because they're playing this music way too loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is unbelievable. But, hey, it's getting the crowd up. It looks like the entire prep student section will be standing for the remainder of this one. BJHW, I mean, not so much. This, this feels like there's some championship on the line. It absolutely does. I mean, we know these two teams hate each other. We know this. We've talked about this. For, and it's bragging rights, too. A lot of these guys are really good friends. They play for other teams together. They've grown up together. Now, third period of action, it's a one-goal game. This game could go either way. Prep, like, as we said, they don't... Uh, also, by the way, Jasinski took a two-minute minor penalty. Just a quick word of note. With the seeding for playoffs beginning in what, two weeks? Yep. Yeah, so February I mean, 2nd is when everything begins. So this game is huge for both teams. Um, we got three referees now. We had one brought in right at the very end, the final 58 seconds. You know, I'm getting goose. This is going to be a great third period of hockey, baby. The Alan Parsons Project, Cyrus, Bulls and intro song. I know Johnny loves this one. Feels, Johnny feels like I'm out there. <laughs> Shut up, Luke. Oh boy. So we're going to have that BJHW first line out there. The prep power play unit, of course, is going to be out there. I mean, when are they not out there? Yeah. Delay has played great. De Silva has played even better, arguably. I mean, 21 saves on 23 shots, and both goals were one-timer tap-ins. I mean, not much you could do there. He's made a lot of really good saves on breakaways. So we're ready to go. Third period action. Doesn't get much more exciting than this. I'm Luke Jordan. To my right is Ryan Contreras Betts. 15 more minutes of some competitive hockey in the IHSHL. Or IHSA. Yeah, I said it right. What yeah, you I said that right. What am I saying? North Central Division. Number one seed versus number six seed. Prep wants to get their 23rd win of the season. Will they do so? It starts off with Beals cutting it, gets it across, Lambert just fires it too wide. That was incredibly close. Cross Victor Albrecht. Now Beals. Look, he's going to cut to the net. Instead, they look up to the open point. Albrecht back down low. Goes in between the legs of Lambert, but they keep it in. Beals, nice pass to Lambert. 
dropped for Albrecht. This puck moving faster than I can say words. Lambert just puts one at the net. Routine save to Silva. Lambert rounding the net off the boards. Kosovic gonna fire, it's tipped by Melkronakis, but just a little bit too wide. What a job by Albrecht to keep it in the zone. Now Melkronakis with a little bit of time down low. Albrecht steps down, and another save for De Silva. Set Trusano. Almost had a chance there. Instead, Samson picks it up as a defender. Now here he comes. Down the left. He's just going to put one that goes wide. Back even strength here. And that made me forget they were even on the power play. They, they possessed it well, but they really didn't get too many chances. That's an incredible penalty kill by BGHW. I mean, like we were talking about earlier, like this prep squad really likes to set up one-timer opportunities, and BGHW's had a really good defensive scheme to keep the middle of the ice clogged up. So they weren't able to get any good quality shot looks on that power play. Rosansky accelerating, picks it up through the neutral zone, but he loses it, and now Maher uses the boards now. Coming in on coffee, he's just going to dump it in deep. And he's going to be the first fortune there. They're going to call that nicing as he was just behind the red line when he cleared that, apparently. Well, 2.13 gone by so far here in this set third period. Suchia with a clean face-off win. Something that's very hard to beat prep in is face-offs. Man, I wish we had face-off percentages as a stat for that yeah. one, too. Well, if you want to know a fun fact, I think I went like 2 for 11 against him. Shanzak takes a defender, just misses wide. What a move by Chanzak. Nigro fires, that one almost tipped in somehow. Chanzak catches it with his hand, puts it and almost found its way. Still loose in front. The net was dislodged, nothing else happens Ooh, there. That is a very loosely dislodged net. That didn't look too dislodged from my vantage point. But I mean, we were talking about the pregame, we talked about a little bit intermittently between the first two periods. Jancic's kind of struggled a little bit to get on the score sheet, and he's looked really good today. A lot of high-grade scoring opportunities. Yeah. Getting really good shot looks off. So, I mean, that's going to be good, big for this BJHW squad. As playoff time approaches, you want your players to be at their best. Whistle blows immediately. I think they're saying they're redo the draw. You get the intel of what happened there? No clue. I, I would assume it probably Bizarre. was a redo draw. That's my assumption. I mean, that's what they're doing. Huh. Well, nonetheless, we resume. Cetrusano in front couldn't hold on to it. Miller dishes it down low. Up in front. Kosovic playing his defensive duties. Beller steps down, fires, and a glove save by Michael DeLay. Really nice save there by DeLay. We talked about earlier, Beller had a, a really good shot selection earlier to lead to the first BJHW goal, the deflection out in front by Barry. As a prep player heads off the ice, it looks like here. Couldn't catch who it was, but one of them skated off. Jaw. It's in between the skates of the official, and now it's finally out. Squeaks out to the middle. Kosovic, nice breakout pass. Lambert finds an open Beals coming across the neutral zone. That puck trickles across. That would have been offsides, but BJHW picks it up nonetheless. Nigro, nice pass to Setrusanu. Takes a hit, but maintains it. Looks in front for John Gatta who has 15 goals in league play this season. Another shot attempt in front. Preps just eating up all the blocks. 11.09 to go. Rosansky escapes Gatta. Veller, gotta get rid of it fast, and that was placed perfectly into the blade of Peterson. Coming in now, hits the brakes, looks for Gatta, one on one with Jasinski. And Jasinski, once again, he's tired, but he's been playing his defense. 
It's a really good poke check by DeLay too to recognize the situation. Tired defenseman back, pokes the puck away to the corner. Deep it goes. Suchi and Forsberg fighting. What a move by Joseph Forsberg. Suchia trying to get some revenge from that. Forsberg loses an edge and he gets snow in the face from Hensley Skate. Dawson leaves it back. Jasinski now, got to get rid of it. And a nice pass to Rosanski who catches it cleanly. Tries to cut inside, but a good poke check by Ryan Glad. Forsberg shoved in down low. No penalty though, and I would have to agree. It's a really good defensive play by Glad, poking it out from behind. Jasinski fired that one, tipped off of a stick of anonymous. I couldn't see who it was, but ends up in the netting. Well, that looked like Drazen that deflected that puck out of play. A really nice shot block, getting a stick in front of it. Well, with just a second under 10 minutes to go, 9.59, left here in regulation. 2-1 prep. Beals hustles in for it across. What a save by Anthony wow. Da Silva. Da Silva on the one-timer. Stands strong and keeps this a one-goal game. Da Silva has looked really strong here tonight. It's going to be his 24th. It's either going to be his 23rd or 24th save of the game so far. It's been a minute since BGHW has beaten Prep. And De Silva really is hungry tonight as he's been doing everything he can. What a shot block by Barry standing in front of Albrecht like it was nothing. Personally, I would have gotten out of the way. <laughs> Kabenyuk dumps it in. Nice pass to Lambert. Gets it across to Melkarnakis. Melkarnakis has to slow down. He's just going to dump it in and get a change. Takes an interesting bounce. Now Veller going to put off the boards to the winger Kabenyuk. He's just going to dump it in all the way, and that is probably going to be an icing. Yes, it will. See a Marcus Kruger jersey down in the BGHW section. Don't see very many Kruger jerseys. That's off topic, I know, but... Little observation about this crowd. I mean, we're going to talk about this crowd a lot. It's been really, really good so far here tonight. Yeah. Still standing is the prep squad. Where, where are all you at Chiefs hockey games? Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, Come on guys. Oh, this one sneaks by Nigro. He's able to get back to it in time, though. Good agility. 2-4 check in on him. Suchia goes flying into the boards. Really Shanzak. good check by Kurpuski right there. What a move by Forsberg. That's his second one of the period. Down the right side, trying to beat Coffey Wadi. Looks in front, it's loose, but the second rebounder isn't there. And that one's gonna be ruled, delayed offside. Couldn't keep it at the point. Malakronakis loops back over to Lambert. Pass too far ahead. Forsberg loses it. He's got to get rid of it. And he eventually does. Taking his time there. Quite frighteningly. Malkanakis looked for a pass. What a wow. defensive sequence by Forsberg. And he just waved no good like he's wow. a DB in football. And he deserves it. Forsberg has been really good defensively here tonight. He's made at least five amazing defensive plays. And then in this period, he's had those two really nice uh, dangles around the forecheck of this prep squad. He's playing really good two-way hockey here so far tonight. Beals leaves it behind, intended for Lambert. And talking about um, Joseph Forsberg earlier, he's actually one of the All-Stars voted to the All-Star game for BGHW. They have six in total. Wow. Can't even name all of them off the top of my head. Here's one of them, though, Gatta. Well, I know that first line of Gatta, Chestranu, and um, Peterson. Is, did Peterson make it? I'm not sure. Beals looks up top shelf. He had it, but De Silva robbed it in time. Flash in the leather is De Silva with another really nice glove save. 
with 7.21 here to go in regulation. Rep still has the one goal advantage. The BGHWs stayed on their heels. They've got two shots so far this period. They've been really good opportunities, but got to get a few more shots off on this prep squad if you want to take advantage. Hensley looks in front. Drazen, not the clear attempt he wanted. Here they come. Back waits for the puck to come to him. Still battling down low, but Giordano wins the battle. Dawson. Too far ahead. All the way down it goes, and that will be an icing. Uh-oh. Prep side, not a fan of that icing, but he was behind the red line. I found it quite odd. There was no complaints from the prep bench. It's odd that there's no complaints from either bench at this stage in this game. Yeah. I think they both know that they're on thin ice with how things went down earlier. Yeah, definitely. That second, that ending to that second period put both teams on thin ice. I mean, got a third official coming in. I mean, these teams have a history. They've had some ugly incidents in the past. Albrecht. Wow. Wow. They want to call. Sounds like everybody in the crowd wanted one, whether it was PG or Prep. Now an official's hand is raised, and it's going to be a penalty on BGHW. Meyer picks it up, and it's a power play opportunity in crunch time for Prep, and that is exactly what you don't want if you're the Stampede. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want an interference call, especially. Only 6.19 to go. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure when that penalty came. Who are they sending to the box? That's what I want to know. Barry? I thought Barry just hopped off after a change. Yeah, we, we don't know about this one here, folks. Um, huh. So, well, BJHW heads to the penalty kill and make a nice clear. Kerpieski on the clear. That's not, I don't know what, I don't know what the referees are telling the PA uh, lady, but he made the interference signal, so I don't know what the roughing call is. Huh, bizarre. Albert looks Ooh. across Kosovic. Over to Lambert. I and thought Kosovic deep. had a chance at a one-timer there, but he didn't fire it. Looking to break the ice here with a astronomical goal. That's all that's on Prep's mind right now breaking away from this one goal deficit and taking more of a breather. Lambert, down low, they got a chance here. Beals looks across, it's not in. Wow. Kosovic puts it down low, Beals rings it back up. 50 seconds left on the power play opportunity for the team in black. Beals possessing, gives it up. Back down low. Lambert doing that turn, up in front, give and go, what a wow. save off the chest of the Silva. Another shot comes tipped wide. Rebound Melikronakis, the Silva's on the post. 30 seconds left on this huge power play opportunity. Hard pass to Kosovic. Stepping out in front of his Kerpieski, making quite a play. They still have possession, Lambert in front. Beals could not hold it on long enough. I'm running out of breath here. 14 seconds left on the power play, 4.30 to play. Lamberg walks in down low for Beals. They look for that give and go in front and they can't find it. Sampson now sends it up to the blue line. And the whistle sounds. The oh, net appears. Wow. Net's off. But they were going to get that out of the zone. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm taking a peek over at our goalie, Danny. I don't think he's a fan of that one. I'm not a fan of that one. Wow. This BJHW side is not a fan of that one. Oh, baby. That was a really good, I really like the one man high, three men low defense employed by BJHW. 
it prevents the one-timers. I mean. Gets it out. Back to even strength now. Five on five. Levin tries to ring it up the boards. He has no success there. Now Rosansky up in front. Nobody's got it. The net comes forward and almost falls on De Silva. Levin and Hensley chirping at each other. Four minutes on the dime to go. Almost 30 shots here from Prep. Wow. I mean, that's the average Prep game. They, they get a lot and lot of shots off. Last game, Prep had 34 shots. BJHW 26. Today it's 29 to 16 in favor. A prep on home ice. Here comes Dawson now. Looking for that second goal. De Silva prevents the rebound and is able to get the freeze. De Silva not a fan of Hensley coming in after he made the save and chopping at his glove. I don't blame De Silva. I mean, I'm not a goalie, but from the goalies I know they hate that. Not a lot of time left. Under 240 seconds in total. Forsberg for Jerezen. In deep it goes. Jasinski hustling. Here's Janzak. Trying to avoid Graziani, but Graziani steps in front. 3.30 to go. BJHW still looking for one more, maybe even two, if they really wanted to kill Prep's undefeated season. There is no overtime here in the IHSHL. I request a rule change immediately. Forsberg, he lost it, comes up to Jasinski. Jasinski almost Ooh. found it. Scary moment for De Silva, it was in his padding. Three minutes to go. Beals guarded by Barry. Up against the boards. Right in front, Lambert fires and he didn't get the contact he wanted. Setrusanu, the captain, is gonna turn back and let things generate. BG really needs something. Gatta hustling, but held off well by Jasinski. Nigro able to keep it in, he fires it, and it's, Ooh. well, I believe to be saved by delay. That shot was up high, and I believe it hit him. He got a blocker on yeah. it now. Here comes Lamberg down the left side, sauces it, and it's tipped out of the air by Nigro. Well, this prep first line of Beals, Melikonakis, and Lamberg has been out there for a good two and a half minutes, and they're finally able to get a change. Breakout intercepted, Rosansky. With lots of acceleration, looks in front. Tushia shoved off before he could even get a chance. Here comes Geta. He's got to pick up fast. Horcher coming in hot. Puck goes all the way. Four and icing and a crucial draw for BJHW, but Coach Waters is not motioning any sort of timeout yet. And now they will. There it is. I feel like Peyton Manning out here on Monday Night Football. You gotta call timeout, gotta call timeout. And they do, I mean. This is a very, very big face off if you're BJHW. You have, they still only have two shots this entire third period. The only thing that's scary about this timeout for BG is you're letting that first line on prep rest up. That's exactly what you don't want. But you also gotta draw up a play, so yeah. I mean. I mean, you've got to you got to call. Oh, you got to get a timeout at some point here. You got to figure out: Are you going to pull the Silva? When are you going to pull the Silva? What are you going to try to do? Because they've had almost no offensive zone possession this entire period. Little under 15 minutes gone by. Again, two shots the entire third period. That's not going to cut it against this high-powered prep offense. And De Silva has been standing on his head. 28 saves yet again tonight. Birkenkauter's back in the game after being in the box for quite a while. He's been out of the box for a while, but his coach didn't want him out there. But now they do. De Silva is pulled with a minute 54 to go. Crunch time to say the least. Porcher's trying to start it strong for prep. And they score on the empty netter. Rosansky grabs his second point of the night. 
And that is just about the icing on the cake. Fourth goal of the season for Rosansky. It's an empty netter, but it's a big goal. Nine seconds after the goaltenders pulled, it's a two goal advantage. And I, I, I can see on the bench, Caleb is getting an earful. That was, that was bad defense on an empty net. He, he had his back turned to the puck. That is, I know that's not a happy coach on the bench for this BJHW squad. 1.30 to go, there is still time, but everything mostly deflated. Lots of celebration over on the prep bench as they're 120 away from going 23-0-2 if things stay the same. Again, what's interesting, we mentioned this earlier. Hold on! Glad I had an opportunity, keep going. I mentioned this earlier after that second prep goal. I know it's deflating to have a big goal scored against you, but guys, there's an opportunity. In here. front and a diving play by Coffey! What a play! Up in front, nobody there. Comes up to Veller, he takes a slap shot, it tips out in front. But Beal scoops up the loose change. He gives it in front for Lamberg. It comes back to him. Into the defensive zone for Prep it goes. A little bit of shoving going on from Lock and Coffey. And that's going to draw some sort of penalty. Graziani fired it in deep. I'm surprised that wouldn't be a delay of game call. It should be a delay of game. Ooh, as Lamberg just slashed out the stick of Glad. Lock is going to head to the bat to the box, that's gonna be a roughing call of some sort. There's gotta be a call on, BG, on prep too. I mean, they both got into it at the bench. Uh, yeah, they're gonna send Matt Melkronakis to the bench, or coffee? Yeah, no, coffee's coffee. the one that got in the altercation. He has to go in for sure. Somebody else, I didn't catch it exactly, but somebody slashed the yeah, stick. Yeah, that was Lamberg slashed the stick. Uh, he's not going to get a call. The referees weren't looking there. Despite having three refs, they're not going to catch that. Um, but what I was saying, this BJHW squad, they were sitting down after that goal, except for a senior, Joe Maher. I know it's deflating, but especially when it's this tight of a game, this important of a game, might want to keep the energy up. 40 seconds to go here. PGHW just gonna dump it in deep. One final prayer. They're gonna need two though. Gets up to Janzak. He tries to put it for Kamenyuk. Too far ahead. Jasinski now hustling. Uses the boards. Up to Levin. Levin's gonna fire. And wow. Gets rocked with a man without a stick. Wow. Final 10 seconds. Veller loses an edge. Not the way you want to end the game. De Silva going to cover. They're going to probably just let the time run, are they not? No, it looks like them. they're going to take their final face off. BJHW. Yeah, that, that's something risky, though. You don't want anything bad to happen yeah, I, here. I was just about to say, I, I felt like there was going to be some fireworks here, but I don't know. We'll see. We hope not. Doesn't but. look like anything's being instigated. Final three seconds. The time will run. And prep, 25 games of league play. They're still undefeated, escaping a tight one with the Stampede. How many times do we gotta say this prep showed why they are undefeated? I mean, they did everything right. They kept disciplined at times. I mean, they lost an edge a little. They stepped over that line, but they did almost everything right. They got all of their great. Offensive zone opportunities, lots of shots on goal. You know, good on these two teams for getting together, going through the handshake line. Delay and De Silva, I mean, they both know. They're both top tier goalies. They gotta give each other respect at every opportunity. We'll find out if we end up seeing these two teams again in playoffs. These two teams in playoff action, Luke, let me tell you, that would be one heck of a game. Don't forget that next week it's going to be an even better matchup if you can get much better as the number three, I believe, Ice Cats. Libertyville, Vernon Hills come in to play prep. Same rink, same time. Next Saturday, 
Same people, I think, if Ryan's available. Ice Cats are fifth. They're fifth, wow. Yeah. So they dropped a Behind little bit, Evanston huh? and Nutrier. Yeah, but Ice Cats has an absolute powerhouse of a star player in Tyler Cobe, who has 26 games, 23 goals, and 25 assists. So it'll be fun to see them, him and Nick Lambert, take on each other. Two high, two high scores. That's definitely going to be a good one to watch. I'm hoping I could clear my schedule for that one, but if I'm not, hey, you guys will have the best in the business with Luke right here. Yeah, if, if you guys don't, if we don't have Ryan next Saturday, we might have Johnny Pelletier standing over to the right of us. We'll see. Disgusting. Anyway, Disgusting. we'll figure it out, but I will be here. I'm actually calling two games earlier in the day, so I'm going to be a little bit exhausted to say the least, but I think a little caffeine can't get you through. As close friends take pictures, I should be in that picture down there with Jack, Matt, and Caleb. They took it without me. But anyways, we'll let you enjoy the rest of your Saturday night. I know it's late, but enjoy the rest of your weekend as well, and happy Saturday night and Sunday to all of you viewing. We appreciate your viewership, and we will see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Luke Jordan along with Ryan Couture's Betts, Russell Matthews on Technical Engineer, and Danny Lunard on camera. Have a good night, folks.